Um, testing, testing, one, two, three, does this fucking work? Um, testing, testing, one, two, three, does this fucking work? Um, okay, I guess this is working, ladies and gentlemen. We are playing Hive Swap for no real reason. <laughs> because I am bored beyond, uh, I'm bored beyond uh, comprehension. So I started playing Hive Swap, and, uh, it's a, it's a fun time, I, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, I started playing Hive Swap for no real reason, and I'm just trying to fix the stream here. Um, show that one. Okay, I think it's working now. Um, we're playing Hive Swap now. So I'm just recording this for archival purposes, so fuck it. Um, um, I started playing Hive Swap and chose this bitch's route because she's kind of hot, um, don't fucking judge me, and, uh, she brung us to her house, and now we're in her dungeon, where she has fucking children locked up, and now she wants us to set up an operating table that she probably bought at Ikea. <laughs> if that's not enough for you, then I don't know what the fuck it is. We're continuing with this bullshit, don't mind my voice acting, fuck y'all. All the rectangles contained certain the shots of the other kids in cages around the room. What? I suppose the cameras are pointing at them too. I had no idea this came. That this friendship came with the perk of instant stardom. Now you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable-looking chair facing me and holding a chalice, swishing around some viscous liquid it contains. <laughs> I have all the parts spit out on the floor, organized according to their labels and the instructions. I try to remember the last time I assembled something like this. I, I don't recall enjoying it. To be perfectly honest, this doesn't look like it'll be fun at all. She frowns conspicuously. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry, is this activity not to your liking? You re I, I reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. Ah, yeah, I love shit like this. Mmm, it's exactly what I was born for. I say as I swoosh the screwdriver around, demonstrating my plainly evident skill with the tool. Forget the thing I just thought. Completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop into my head at all the time. It meant nothing. I swear. <laughs> yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. I, I open the little bag full of screws. Jesus, there are like 50 screws to this thing. Where could most of the screws possibly even go? Judging from the picture, the table really doesn't seem that complicated. I look at the screwdriver and then study the screws. Every single one requires an alien wrench. Does this... Wait, what? Not an, Al an Allen wrench. Does this thing even come with an Allen wrench? The instructions seem to suggest it does. I look around, but I don't see one. Did I open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off to into a dark dungeon crevice nearby? M maybe I lost some of the screws too. Damn it! I, I begin to sweat and look around nervously. I check underneath one of the parts. No, it's not under there. I grip the screwdriver just a little tighter. And now I'm wondering what to do next. Uh, uh, just do your best assembling the table. This is what the friends are for. I decide it would be best not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. My friend would probably consider it bad form. I'll just make do and twist in all the screws by hand <laughs> as best as I can. My broken arm isn't making this any easier. So I favor the other one, and prop pieces into place precariously, leaning against the other, while I nudge them into position with my legs so the screw holes align. It's really frustrating work, I'm not gonna lie. 
as I'm twisting the first screw, the groove slip, and the screw gets stuck, but I've already turned it too tight! <laughs> now it's hard to get it out. I twist it in reverse harder, but my fingers slip, and the table pieces start to slide. Oh shit, they're going to fall. I react to catch them, but it's too late. The heavier piece tips over and slams my me in the broken ribs on its way to the floor. It hits the floor with a bang, the stuck screw pops out, and goes bouncing like 10 or 15 feet away, selling teeth underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. Oh god, I'm probably gonna need to get that. I hear a light chuckle. <laughs> good. Good. She takes another sip from her chalice and settles even more comfortably into the chair. Is she enjoying this? I think she's enjoying watching me struggle to put this stupid thing together. Maybe a little too much. May Nevertheless, I continue. A friend is a friend, and you don't like to let your friends down. I I've committed myself to this project. Oh, I will later get the screw out of the fucking... I'll get the screw out from under there a bit later. Maybe when I need the final screw... I turn my attention back to the table pieces and try a different strategy. I place the biggest part, the table platform, flat on the floor. The legs would be pointing upwards if they were attached. Guys, this is IKEA simulator, but with Homestuck. Um, I position one leg in the right spot. In alignment with the holes, I sit on the table platform and steady the leg with my feet. I grab another screw and concentrate. <laughs> She sounds so pleased. It's strange, I, I admit, for watching this sort of activity, to make someone so happy. But I also have to admit, in taking a certain pride into it, it's wonderful, actually, to, to feel useful, wanted, important even, if only somewhat menially to a great new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to prove her life. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice one of the caged kids reaching out with his hand. He's concentrating. Then I notice the screw he I lost slowly slide out from it underneath its hiding place. Nice. Everyone's working like a team down here. Oh. Our daughter does not look at the kid, but sneers a bit. She reaches towards him, and he appears to have trouble breathing. After a moment, I notice the screw slow slides back under the thing she releases him from his breathing problems resumes her pleasant expression and takes another sip from the chalice I guess that was against the rules um <laughs> I'll decide to make note about that my friend turns runs a tight ship down here I respect that about an hour later, I have all four legs on, plus some other accounts attached. I wrestle mightily with the thing to get it upright, using only my good arm. It seems I may have forgotten about the final missing screw. I, I doubt the table needs it. I, 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 I decide I won't bring it up here if she won't. I can test. It, it's pretty wobbly since I was only able to tighten the screw to my bare fingers. <laughs> But again, she doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> I recline and... She reclines and has a look on her face which makes her appear absolutely enamored of my handiwork. I, she finished her drink and the chalice is on the side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor toward her. It looks like some sort of spider the size of an average dog. Its abdomen is preposterously large. At, Actually, I think it's a huge tick. That's what it looks like. It settles just in front of her. She puts her legs on top of it and crosses them. It settles under their weight and grumbles. Let's try it out, shall we? I, I shrug and sit down on the rather rickety table. I'm about to lie down, but she interrupts me. No, you fool, you absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. I stand up, embarrassed. Again, without looking at the caged kid, she raises an arm toward him and beckons. He stares blankly and opens his own cage. Which apparently wasn't locked! 
he shuffles vacantly over to my table and lies down on its surface. She looks at me expectantly. I'm not sure what to do! What? You didn't think I'd be playing table stickball on that thing, did you? I'm not sure what table stickball is! Oh, you really are pretty simple, aren't you? It's like a miniature version of arena stickball, played on a table. Got it? I don't, but I nod! <laughs> no, go to it. <laughs> I shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. <laughs> that seems to be the right thing to do since the ting comes with shackles. <laughs> she gets up and lifts her huge tick like pet. It makes more grumpy noises. She plops the enormous thing right down on the kid's chest, and he appears rendered unable to protest. The tick bites the boy's neck and begins to feed. <laughs> she smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark rust-colored blood dribbles from the place where it is attached to the boy's neck. Moments go by while she looks gratified by the process. Proud almost. And she looks at me expectantly. Well? I don't know what she means. The final screw. Aren't you going to retrieve it? And screw it into wherever it needs to go. The job isn't done. I don't keep the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. Oh, of course, I, I wasn't thinking. I shouldn't have known my friend wouldn't let that go unnoticed. Uh, actually, I feel like an idiot for thinking it would. I, I stop very low to the ground and on my knees, placing my cheek just above the floor. I also realize that the fucking capture window is not working properly, and it's been lopsided this entire time. Um, isn't that, um, a love? isn't that fucking lovely? Where is the window capture? This is a horrible idea. Why did I not see this earlier? Okay, now, uh, now we've solved the problem. Apologies for, like, the two viewers watching this. Um. I stood very low to the ground on my knees, placing my cheek just above the floor. I peer under the large edifice. It is dark in there. And goes back a ways. Lots of room for that dart. For that fucking screw to roll. I take a few pitiful swipes with my good arm, and then come up empty. Must be further back! I... I think I can see it! Yeah, it must be it. You just... Just... Think... Just think a little further. I also realize the, the fucking... The, the this. Gonna put that in the corner again. Just gotta... Just gotta... Just gotta... Plop this... Right there. There we go. I, I got an idea. A tool would be helpful. Guess the screwdriver will come in handy after all. Mm. How did she know? My new friend must be very wise. I... I think I'm liking her more every minute. <laughs> I grab the screwdriver and feel around with it. I... Yes! I got it! I think... I carefully scrape it close to myself and pick it up. I then go back to the table and find the one remaining hole I left unscrewed. Oh, I slide under the table as the mechanic would it with a the car. There it is. The table is creaking and wobbling a bit now. The, the tick is really getting into dinner, it seems. All the loose screws in the table have added up to a lot and give leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the final screw will help. Our daughter's return to the setup with the monitors. She's adjusting some things on the feed, controlling the zoom of the cameras, and typing some remarks into a chat when- Is she making a fucking snuff film? 
This is very good material today. It's not often that I can provide contents of this caliber to my subscribers. Go on, complete your projects. This will be very good. I still think it's weird that she likes me watching put furniture together so much. But I'm not one to judge friends. S sounds like a great way to lose friends, honestly. <laughs> Fuck. I, I screw in the final screw, but the stress on the table... Is causing the holes to be misaligned. This won't be easy. This huge tick shifts its grotesque body above me, causing the table to creak loudly. I nervously slide halfway out from under the table to check it out. Then a loud pop. The sound of scraping metal. Six or seven screws shoot out of the desk like rivets in a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit this thing is. I think it might be a little too late. I, I, I really needed that alley wrench. All four legs splayed dramatically from underneath it at once. Like a baby deer on ice, the table platform comes crushing down on my lower torso, breaking my pelvis. I bellow in pain and flail to pull myself out. I forget that I'm still holding the screwdriver, and in my desperate flailing, I plunge the screwdriver into the fat abdomen of the tick, which begins ru ru gushing rust blood out with great force, <sighs> spraying my upper, higher upper body and face. The beast starts thrashing wildly and screaming. I, I can't see my new friend through the blood in my eyes, but I can imagine she's thrilled about what's going on here. <laughs> I... My annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. I had to get my miserable torso out from under this shitty table. Wait, I got an idea. With my broken arm, I start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick while yelling yeehaw. I clutch the screwdriver handle with my other ha hand hard. The blood gushing monster starts kicking and rearing, then blasts off across the dungeon floor like a pig in a rodeo. I hold on for dear life, still blind, but my plan works. I've been pulled out from under the tomb I've spent the last hour constructing for myself. <laughs> my pelvis is in ruins, but at least I'm free now and riding like the wind. As, as me and the blood spewing tick go, tearing around the room, crashing into the stuff, I hear a boy crying. You guess our daughter became distracted because of my foolish display to seize her paralyzation method on him. Or maybe distract is the wrong word. <laughs> maybe she's disappointed by my foolishness. Oh, oh god, I might be blowing it right now. It takes words and suddenly starts running up the stairs. Ow, 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 my brittle pelvis feels every step on the way up. <laughs> It careens through the breast of the hive, crashes through the front door, and comes to a sudden halt. I'm catapulted violently over its backside and sail 50 yards through the air. I land on my ass, wipe the blood from my eyes. Okay, this was embarrassing, but everyone makes mistakes, right? I can still salvage this friendship, I, I know I can. I turn back to look at her hive. Our daughter's standing in the doorway with a furious look on her face. She, she's flipping me off. You will not be my friend. Did I get the bad ending? Fuck, I got the bad ending? There were bad endings in this game? <laughs> I hate the fact that now I need to do that all over again. Okay, time to fuck, fuck H. Fast forward. Fast forward. Uh, 
I'm gonna get the hell out of here instead. Let's try that. Um, oh, I, I see that I have people watching, I think. First, I clear my head and try to think innocent thoughts. Okay, welcome, everybody. I'm playing Hive Swap for no apparent reason. Um, and I'm voice acting because I'm a fucking plebeian. Um, and try to think innocent thoughts. The fluffy clouds in the sky ironing some clothes. Last off, we uh, tried to assemble an Ikea table, stabbed a spider in the eye, and then got rejected by this bitch. Now, we're trying not to assemble the table because that led to, led to the bad ending. Fluffy clouds in the sky, ironing some clothes, a winning touchdown pass from the, the sports. Our, our dot is long black hair spilling over a cloak. Her, wait, don't, these are not innocent thoughts. Shut it down, shut it down. There's no time for thinking. I have to act. I hurl the screwdriver at her and run. She calmly lifts a hand toward one of the kids in the cages. The kid tenses up and lifts a hand in the direction of the screwdriver. The screwdriver freezes mid-air right in front of our daughter's hand. I run up the stairs. She twitches a finger and the cage kid does a full body spasm. And the screwdriver goes sailing towards you. It stabs me deep in my leg and I buckle over, tumbling backward down the stairs. I'm a crumpled heap at the bottom of the stairs, bleeding, and I think my arm is broken in two places now. <laughs> that didn't seem very friendly to me. Luckily for you, I'm very determined to take relationships work, even ones with people who flee simple furniture assembly projects. She stands over me. I attempt to pull the screwdriver out of my leg. And I can't move. She holds an outstretched hand right above me. You shouldn't try to move yet. And you certainly shouldn't try and pull out that screwdriver. You'll get blood everywhere. To my three little eyes, under the present condition, it seems to me that only one of us should accept them to walking up these stairs. I feel relieved. Perhaps she has some... Alien means of levitating me up the stairs. Wait, no. My body is tensing up again. It, it, it's moving without my permission. I get to my feet without taking the screwdriver out. Oh God, that hurts. What? Did, what is she making me? Wait. No, she can't be. I use both my arms and all my strength and pick her up entirely. The pain from my arm is excruciating. Arms with broken bones are not meant for heavy lifting. The additional weight on my wounded leg isn't great either. I hold her as a groom would hold a bride. She wraps my hands around my neck to hang on to me in what strikes me as an overly familiar manner. She looks directly into my eyes and grins. <laughs> this is better. Now, onward and upward, new friends. <laughs> My legs begin to operate without my consent. They wobble and struggle under the weight. The wound throbs. I lumber back up the long flight of stairs, carrying her all the way. With it, and I take her back to the kitchen and set her down in a chair, seated at a table. <laughs> you didn't think I'd forget about dinner time, did you? Let's put your unfriendly behavior behind us. It's a good thing that I'm benevolent enough for you to overlook disgusting acts of betrayal. You may have noticed I keep several friends in my hive who I have similarly forgiven. Consider the transgression blood beneath the abattoir. I exhale? Now that she mentions it, yes, I am hungry. Maybe a warm meal will lift my spirits and get this... Her, 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 he or two for turbulent friendship back on track. Maybe I'll get the chance to pull this screwdriver out of my leg. <laughs> I pull a chair and attempt to sit down, but my legs lock up. Apparently, this was not the right thing to do. Oh, but why are you sitting? There's cooking to be done. <laughs> Oh god, I stagger mechanically over to the fridge and open it. I pull out a sm large hawk of some sort of alien mystery meat and put it on the counter. 
With my broken arm, I reached an anguish for a big dangling meat cleaver. I, I chopped the hog, wincing it with every swing of the cleaver. Oh, I didn't know that's the way she likes it, but I surmise this is what she prefers in a piece of meat, since technically she's the one doing the cooking. I put it on the table in front of her, along with a fork and the knife beside it. My muscles relax, and I apparently are allowed to control my body again. She does nothing, except look at me with a pleased expression. I eye the meat in front of her, then the meat on the counter, and the chair on the other side of the table. What should I do? P prepare a plate for myself? Is that what she wants me to do? I'm saving here. Well, it looks like you're confused. Isn't it obvious what to do next under your own volition? A good friend would know what to do. In fact, I don't think a good friend would take nearly as long to decide what the right thing to do next is. It actually doesn't seem to me a very rude friend would hesitate as long as you are hesitating. Or perhaps someone who is not a friend at all. I begin to sweat again. I clearly don't have much time to wait. make up my mind. If I wait for even a few seconds longer, I'll probably be guilty of being a bad friend. Maybe even a dreadful one. This is not the type of person I like to think I am. What am I going to do? Feed her. Feels like the only obvious thing to do. She's looking up at me with quite expectantly. I reach for the fork with my good arm. And I go for the knife with the other. Ow, ow. I can't do it. My arm is... The arm is much less serviceable when the muscles are not being forced to be a psychic override. To disregard the pain response. Nevertheless, she looks at me patiently. And smiles. <laughs> That's nice of her. I think. Not being mad about it. <laughs> I feel like I'm growing closer to my new friend by the minute. I put the fork down. And pick up the knife with my good arm. And I cut into the meat with several pieces. With a careful sawing motion. I put the knife down and pick up the fork. And stab a piece. I put it close to my mouth, and she seems pleased. Very good. Nice technique. Well-sized morsels, too. She chews the meat with excellent form. She has very good table manners, I, I think. When uh, she finishes the pieces, I slice off more and continue. This is interesting. Meat looks very good. My mouth is watering, but she doesn't offer any. Oh well, when is the right time for me to eat too? I'm, I'm sure she'll let me know. The meal is finished. There is no more meat. Except for a few pieces of unchewable gristle. She reclines and steeples her fingers, looking quite pleased with how the evening has gone so far. <laughs> you, I'm sure, aren't, I'm, I'm not sure why she's laughing. D did I do something funny? <laughs> oh my, what a fool. I point at myself, w wondering if she's referring to me. I, I don't know what I've done that was foolish, if so, um... I'm still not sure what I should find so amusing. <laughs> she pauses her laughter for a minute or two, then slowly begins to frown. A faint blue tear rolls down her cheek from her bottom eye. The truth is... I don't even know why I'm laughing. This isn't very funny. What's happening here? It was a good dinner. You did a good job, whoever you are. She puts her face in both of her hands and sobs quietly. I I have no idea what to do about this. 
I stand there, still holding the fork, feeling a bit useless. This is a lot of pressure, you know. Being so respected and admired for your high status in this world, I didn't ask for this to be so superior to so many. Much is expected of you. Much is presumed about what your personality will be before you even develop one. You work hard and build a brand based only on what you think people assume you should be like. Sometimes I wonder, am I even that good at being sinister? I Could I be more sinister if I tried harder? Maybe this is not my true calling after all. You offer, you begin to offer words of sympathy, I begin to offer words of sympathy, this all be seems heartbreaking to me, my poor new friend, but my jaw muscles contract and my mouth shuts involuntarily, I, I guess it's not my turn to speak yet, okay, that works for me, <laughs> I like to be a good listener to my friends, and what would happen if I changed my brand? If I stopped being so sinister online, my friends and followers would deride and reject me, and my superiors would eat me alive. If I show weakness, if I scale back on my bloodthirsty content, I will incur the scorn of a wise-ass clown with a hundred million subscribers. Will I be in a cage someday, listening to a fucking fool honk his horn for likes? No. I must persist. How lonely it is to know this is all I can do until the day I leave this planet. I have no material or sensory comforts left for me here until I can get a ship and fly away. Pain is my only solace. My hand holding the fork grips it tighter. I'm horrified to realize what it is the process I'm doing. I bring it down hard on her hand, which is placed flat on the table. She doesn't flinch or react in any way. Three trails of cerulean blood flow from the tines where they pierce her skin. That wasn't very friendly, I think. But then I was the one who did it. I was. <laughs> I'm so confused. My subscribers are not real friends. They adore me only for my sinister content, the show I provide, my wicked, infectious laughter. I get jealous of them sometimes, because they get to watch my content. It must be thrilling, I think. But maybe... I'm just jealous of them because they get to be people who aren't me. This is fucking deep. I I know, apologies if you can't relate. She pulls the fork out of her hand. Fuck.
watch it continue this absolute fucking madness? That is Hive Swap Friend Sim? With this bipolar piece of shit <laughs> that I'm starting to catch on. She pulls the- oh fuck. She pulls the fork out of her hand and lays it gently on the plate of gristle I didn't feed her! The people down in stairs in their cages aren't my friends either. They act like they're my friends though, and sometimes I can believe it. But they don't really want to be friends with me. Nobody does. I'm the only person who ever really wanted to be my friend. Who's ever tried to be is you. I clear my throat and point to myself innocently. That said, I've decided. I've passed the test. You will be my friend, officially. Uh, as such, I think a reward is in order. I am overjoyed! My heart starts racing! I can't believe it! A new real friend! But I don't have much time to enjoy this achievement. My body is doing something again. I bend down in strained motion and pick up the plate and fork. I position the plate over my wide open mouth and scrape in all the remaining gristle and begin chewing. It's virtually inedible. My mouth humors the act of chewing for two seconds, and then I swallow it all in one whole painful gulp. Tastes like friendship! Friendship! <laughs> <laughs> That's Ardata's route? What? <laughs> that was fun. That was interesting. For one thing. <laughs> Can I have more of her? <laughs> Can I have more of Ardata? She was nice. Ardata was nice. Jesus H. Christ, that was a, a fun thing. Maybe we'll do the other route now. I'll just keep it on the Be Right Back screen, because why not? So, yeah. So far, Hive, Hive Swap is pretty fun. Hive Swap is, is it's pretty fun. I guess I could say it's fun. Honestly. Um. That first route that I played was... It was something. We had... Ikea Simulator 101, and then we had, um, Masochism. Yes, Masochism. Um, and now, uh, let's do the other route, I, I guess. Because I like the first route, but first we shall wait and, uh, see if anybody else will chime in. At, at, at some point. Oh, hi. Hi, Lurks, if that's you in chat. If you're still here. Sorry for me being a horrible entertainer. Um. Yeah. Um. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. 
honestly, I don't know what to say. Hi, bruh, moment. Does that work? Does that do a thing? No, it doesn't. Well, uh... <sighs> okay, let's start the next route, I guess. Let's start... Again, I've just crash landed. Okay, yeah, there is that. But instead, the person who approaches me is Hot Dog Man. Oh, yes, yeah, someone is approaching. A strange gray skin alien with a cozy looking hoodie. Perhaps they will make a good friend. What's up? Oof. Uh, hang on, sorry, I didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. Well, I guess you were really weird looking. Uh, kind of uncomfortable at that, about this. My stammering reply eventually conveys that I'm a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in need of some medical treatment. I am also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. <laughs> hungry, huh? I see what your game is. I'm not sure what he's talking about, and uh, my eyes drift toward the obvious target. An exquisite hot dog, he's holding. Looks really, really good. My mouth starts watering noticeably. Oh, no. I knew it. You're just like all the rest. I know my agenda is I have to relinquish my delicacy. Well, forget it. I've been tricked out of two other oblong meat products this week already. I know you probably think I'm an easy mark due to my blood color, but I still have dignity at least. You don't know anything about his blood color. Or why that would matter in this conversation about his hot dog. I'm hungry, sure, but I did not mean to cast a threatening gaze at his meal. All I really want to do is make a new buddy. So I don't feel quite so alone in this strange new world. I see. I, you just want a friend and not my sweet meat. I'm sorry, just get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. You can't be too careful. Folks tend to get that greedy look in their eyes around my warm sausage. These are odd ways to express the things he's saying, but it would be the route to point that out. Probably best to change the subject. Get this blossoming friendship moving in the right direction. E yeah, I used to mean or I mean. My place was bombarded by drones a while ago. And uh, now I don't have a hive. But I'm making it work out here. I'm foraging for tasty things when I when I can. I've gotten pretty good at it. People Talking to people giving me meat products. I mean, I feel a sense of pity for my new friend. I thought I had it rough crash landing here. Hungry and friendless, and come to think of it, feels like my arm is broken. My ribs, too. Maybe enough self pity. This is about making a great new friend. I asked my friend if there's anything to do to improve his life. Oh, wait. Are we friends now? Like, is that official? Man, I don't know. Why don't we slow it down a bit? See how things go. I'm not saying it's out of the question. But I just think I should take some time to see if you're actually friendship material. This is someone I trust, you know? Not just some looky-loo gunning for my delicacy!
Oh, fuck H, I'm back. Uh, disappointment? Of course. Oh, damn. I really got over my skis again. Of course he's right, this is totally reasonable. I feel I can do whatever it takes to win him over. I have a mental note to avoid looking at or mentioning his hot dog. Because it seems to be such a sensitive subject. I do everything in my power to avert my glare from the hot dog. I am aggressively not looking at it. In fact, don't think hot dog thoughts. Don't think hot dog thoughts. It's not. It's working. I aren't thinking about hot dogs at all. It's like he isn't even holding one. And no one ever even brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice on some primal level my current not hot dog mindset. He smiles. I pay closer attention to the boy's face. It's a nice smile he has. And actually very kind. Zarming. A few freckles here and there, a mop of messy hair draping over his eyes. What a nice friend this would be to have. I, I think. He's kind of adorable. Really. If it disregarded the prickly attitude about his hot dog. Okay, wait a minute. I don't want to start thinking thoughts are too friendly. Dial it down a little. Just the basics. I just want a cool new friend. Nothing more. I should try to spark up some non-meat related conversation before things get awkward. I want about half this house. It got bombed. Yeah, you know. A routine, routine drone pass through my hood. A little bombing. A little calling. That's how it goes around here. Oh, the lucky one. My Lucis, not so much. He's a goner. I don't know what a Lucis is, but you can deduce me someone important to him who probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide to write. Decide the right play is to show some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes I think. I enjoy savory bun delights as a way of covering up the pain. They're so good though it's hard to stop. I also favored the juicy meats before he died anyway. It's just something we did together. How do we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it, please, dude. Don't bring it up again. He, I didn't bring it up, but I don't want to correct him. The boy is clearly grieving. I see two faint red tears roll down his cheeks from behind messy bangs. Mary can't take it. I gotta console this homeless boy somehow. That'll definitely be my friend. But what to do? I keep it simple, and pat him on the back a couple of times, everything is gonna be okay. Since you're new, I'm his new friend, or at least working towards earning that status, he is a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. He wipes his tears and appears to get himself back together. My friendly gesture worked! You're right, I shouldn't let the past get me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. No need to worry about the knocks on my door because I don't have a door anymore. Maybe I can live off the land for my rest of my life. Scrounging for sumptuous indulgences, wherever I may find them. By rummaging through awful drums or smooth talking the right mark. Sounds like the life, honestly. I'll miss my loosest, but I think I'll be proud of me. If I can make it without him, I can survive on my own. I know he'll be proud. Maybe I don't even need to leave the planet. Maybe I can avoid taking the ordeals altogether. 
I can't test who you can't find! If I play my cards right, maybe I can probably live to ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. I like hiding in alleys and stores, scraping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going. I honestly, I don't even need to get by that long. I, since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls, so I think I might just be able to make this work. I look confused at the last remark. But again, I don't want to be impolite. I hold, he holds up his hand as to tell you not to bother. I can tell you from here it's okay. I rust bloods don't live a long time. The blood classes higher up than me live progressively longer the higher you go up. Sea dwellers live basically forever. It's kind of crazy and seems unfair, but that's how it is. I'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have to very long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. I'm happy to settle into a nice short ride. Keep a low profile, take in some good meat along the way. If nothing, nothing wrong with that life, you ask me. I understand. Seems like a tragic story, but if your friend has made peace with his destiny, I might as well too. I offer a sympathetic shrug and continue my impressive streak of in consecutive seconds not looking at his hot dog at all. He smiles again. It seems to be relaxing, gripping the dog less tightly. That, that, that's good. You know you're good at listening. Not many people understand me at all. A lot of people find my overly possessive attitude toward me to delights to be strange and off-putting. I've heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. Phew. There are some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe if you put me at ease because it's obvious you're lower than me. No offense, but you are. Drones would vaporize a hornless goof like you, no questions asked. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I laugh it off. I'm not scared. I say I've survived worse. I, I pat my broken ribs and wins. I clutch my sore ribs with my broken arm and wins even harder because of that. Oh, man. Looks like that arm's hurt, huh? I guess it's broken. Let's see what we can do about that. Here, hold this a second. He hands you his hot dog. He hands me his hot dog without hesitation. Oh, wow, he wants me to hold it. Such a remarkable gesture. Trust, I'm overwhelmed! I gingerly take the hot dog with my good arm. Be very careful. I hold the hot dog from from beneath with my fingertips. As if it's a priceless, delicate treasure. He takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. He then takes off his shirt. I have heard my eyes for a moment, then realized it's silly. Nothing particularly indecent about this, I suppose. If he's comfortable, so are you. And he puts his vest back on, takes the hot dog back from you, and hands you the shirt. Here I made a sling out of it. That should help. He's right, it does help. My broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. This shirt smells like meat, too. I can't tell if I think this is a bonus or if it's weird. I decide it's a bonus. This is my new friend, he loves me, and so do I. It's my greatest common interest, in fact. Nice. You know, I think we make a pretty good team. Yet I don't know if I'm ready to officially call you my friend yet. But I may be getting close. You're pushing all the right buttons, man. Just being someone who listens and understands. You have no idea how much that means to me. I'm so happy to hear this, it makes my heart sing! Well, if I'm keeping it totally real, some of these things he's saying are just a little strange, like... Maybe this boy wasn't really socialized properly by his Lucis, I guess? I think that might be his dad. But again, I, I don't dare ask. When the positive feelings are flowing like this, why kill the mood? He gets a little close. He gets a little closer. And swoops a hand through his thick of black bangs. For the briefest moment, I catch a glimpse of one of his eyes guarding me fondly. My ear beats a little faster. 
He puts his hand on his shoulder. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if all of he's interested in friendship. I hope that's all he wants. I don't think I'm ready for anything more than that. I'm desperate for friendship, but really companionship of any resort, but that's moving pretty fast for me. But I'm too nervous to make my feelings clear and hold this. If he goes any further, I'm not sure I'll... If I'll have to have the will to protest. Listen, dude. This gorgeous meat product we both admire. I'm thinking. Maybe we should share it. I think that sounds good, actually. Oh my, yes! That sounds wonderful. I'm so hungry. I'm beside, I'm beside myself with the gratitude that Diamond is willing to share me. Something so precious to him really means a lot. Here, I have an idea. He brings his face close to mine. He holds the hot dog up between your faces, with both of the ends of the dog pointing to his mouth and yours. You're not sure what he wants to do. You can't find the breath to ask. It seems like he wants me to... Eat the hawk dog with him, Lady in the Tramp style. Yes, if you... If I... If pressed on it, I'd agree the act is uncomfortably erotic, but... I have to admit it is a good way to share a food item. Whilst... Ensuring it gets split about evenly. And I absolutely loathe the idea of letting a friend down. It's completely at odds with my values as a person. I chomp down on my end of the hot dog as he chomp does with it simultaneously. Holy shit, that is good. I take another bite. Takes it. And he times his bite perfectly. He's eerily good at this game. He's throwing you off your chewing a bit, which makes you cough a little when you swallow. But you don't feel like you can pause without breaking eating rhythm without him. Might be a fat friend, would do. You keep going without really swallowing as you go. You get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation you aren't sure how I'm gonna handle. I have it planned for it, and it's coming up fast. The hot dog backlog collecting in my throat is getting a bit too heavy. So I try to swallow, but I can't. I gag, and I cough up all the chewed hot dog matter explosively into his face. He recoils, absolutely stunned. His bangs are blown back, and he's staring at you with wide eyes. Hot dog bun bits are all over his face. Fuck. Fuck. He says nothing for a moment, then puts his hand on his throat. Oh, fuck, he's choking! He points at his mouth desperately. He needs to do something. The Heimlich, of course! That's what I need to do! I need to save my friend's life! You get behind him and put your good around him and run a spell he'd form a fist. I plunge his fist into under the ribs, trying to dislodge the... Masticated delicacy, it's no use. I can't get any leverage. I need my other arm. It really hurts though. I'll have to make the sacrifice for my friend. Yes, a friend who may have just tried to trick me into kissing him with a silly hot dog stunt. I'm not sure how I'll navigate that tricky subject once he's breathing again, but I'll deal with that later. Right now, you have a light. I have a light to see. I pull my broken arm out of its sling and you grab my other fist through the front of his belly and squeeze. I try and try. His face is turning. Well, not blue, but deep red? You guess because his blood is rust colored. Sure, that makes sense. I yank one more time, my broken arm throbbing in pain. A huge gob of chewed hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannonball, and the explosion creates enough force in the other direction that causes you to actually lift him up into the air and accidentally suplex him into the mud behind you. I turn, I turn and go, you. I in turn go tumbling over him, and the two of us are soon locked into an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. I roll and roll down the greasy incline toward a nearby neighborhood, toward a street. Luckily, I stop just short of the street, but Diamond's neck lands right on the sharp edge of the curve. After flipping in the air once or twice, I come down right on his face within my big ass. I hear a crack. Diamond? I slap his cheek a little. No response! He's not breathing. I check his mouth. Throat. It's clear of hot dog debris. Oh god! This can't be happening! I look around, panicked. This isn't what I need right now. All I wanted was a friend. I can't be held responsible for alien murder! I have to hide the body. Uh, I see a couple kids creeping out of nearby houses to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. I gotta find a bush or something. There. Over there! It's like a little alien bushy thing. It's pretty small, but all I have to do. I drag the vest, the vested shirtless carcass over to the bush. I dumped the body into the bush, and it was really not convincing. 
looked like a dead kid who was unceremoniously dropped on top of a small bush in a poor attempt to conceal a murder. I gotta come up with something better. Wait a minute. Someone is standing behind me. Our daughter! What? <laughs> Where did you come from? Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. Uh, I'll take care of it for you. I killed him! I killed him! <laughs> I killed him! I fucking killed him! What? What are you doing? Fucking mom walked in on me playing I've Swap. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a bro moment indeed. Not getting the good ending for that. I am not getting the good ending for that. Um That was a bra moment. But anyway, um... Uh, stream's been going on for like an hour now. <laughs> So, this has been a uh, hype swap.
friend sim chapter one. I. I I guess. Yeah, this has been a Lenovo six five four. Signing out, I guess. <laughs>